What caused the blue ball to move? Well, it moved because the white ball hit it. And what caused the white ball to hit it? Well, it started moving after the player kicked it. And what caused her to kick it? Well, she chose to. And what caused her to choose to? Nothing made her. She chose to. Many of us have two fundamental ideas about the world. The first is that we have free will. What does that mean? Basically, it means we do things because we choose to. Why are you watching this video right now? Well, it's because you chose to. You chose to watch it because that's what you wanted to do. Perhaps you feel you were forced to watch this video because your teacher gave it to you as a homework assignment. However, you could have chosen not to watch it and get in trouble tomorrow. In fact, you could have chosen to drop out of school and move to Antarctica. There is nothing impossible about performing these actions, so you must not have moved to Antarctica because you chose not to. When philosophers talk about free will, it is in this very fundamental sense that we don't often mean when we talk about freedom. Imagine you have been taken prisoner and your captors have restrained all of your body parts so that all you can move is your eyes. While you are not free to speak or walk around or move to Antarctica anymore, you still have free will in that you can choose to look left or right. And even if your eyes could not move, you can choose to plan how you'll write a book about the experience or recall a pop song to pass the time. So long as you could have done something else, you are considered to have free will. The other idea many of us have is that every effect has a preceding cause. You are hearing my voice because your speaker is emitting sound waves. And your speaker is emitting these sound waves because I have uploaded them to the internet. And I have uploaded them to the internet because my professor asked me to. My professor asked me to because, well, you get the idea. We could do this until we reach the beginning of time. We call this idea determinism, that all events are determined by previous events and that you will never do what you wouldn't have done anyway. But if this is the case, does that mean that all of our choices are caused by something else? And does that mean that our choices aren't free since they are the results of previous events? Suppose there was an all-powerful, all-knowledgeable being that knew where every single particle in the universe was and what its trajectory is. He could know in the future where every single one of those particles would end up. Now suppose it knew everything there was possibly to know about you. Could it know every single decision you would make before you made it? And if so, does that mean that your decisions are determined and therefore not free? The answers to these questions will give you an idea on where you fall in the free will debate. Perhaps you believe that even if this being knew what you would do, that doesn't mean that your decisions aren't free. We call this position soft determinism, the belief that even if our actions are determined by previous events, we can be considered free so long as we are the ultimate source of our decisions. In other words, the ideas of free will and determinism are compatible. Compatibilists believe that we were asking the wrong question all along. Instead of asking if we are free, we should be asking ourselves how free we are. So let's ask ourselves a compatibilist question. Does advertising make us less free? If I see an advert for an ice cold beer and I instinctively start salivating, that action is likely to be viewed as determined. But if I proceed to buy that beer, even if I was influenced, I was still the ultimate source of that action, right? For the easily influenced, perhaps the advertising made them less free. But as long as they could have chosen otherwise, then they were free to choose whether or not to buy the beer. But were they? After all, even if they bought the beer because they wanted it, they never chose to want the beer, nor did they choose to have brains that were susceptible to advertising. When we think about what we know about our own brains and decisions, we must wonder if we are free to do anything other than what we in fact do. And if this is the case, can we be blamed or praised for our actions? Are we morally responsible for anything that we do? It has been noted that people are more likely to engage in road rage during the summer. It seems the hotter temperatures make us more impatient and aggressive. If these drivers would have otherwise remained calm in the winter, does it seem fair to say that they were responsible for losing their temper? After all, they didn't choose the weather or their brain chemistry at a point a decision was made.
Can we say a kleptomaniac is responsible for stealing, even if a doctor would say that they were compelled to do so? Free will deniers, such as neurophilosopher Sam Harris, believe that like the kleptomaniac, any action we take is just the logical output of whatever inputs react with our current brain chemistry. Free will is an illusion, says Harris. Thoughts and intentions emerge from background causes of which we are unaware and have no control. Is it as simple as that? Or is there something unique to us that makes us truly free?